welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. But on this day in Tudor history, the 9th of August 1561, while on a visit to Ipswich in Suffolk, Queen Elizabeth I issued a royal mandate forbidding women to reside in cathedrals and colleges, stating that no manner of person being either the head or member of any college or cathedral church within this realm shall from the time of notification hereof in the same college have or be permitted to have within the precinct of any such college his wife or other woman, to abide and dwell in the same, or to frequent and haunt any lodging within the same college, upon pain that whoever shall do to the contrary shall forfeit all ecclesiastical promotions in any cathedral or collegiate church within the realm. Elizabeth had been shocked by the number of women and children in the cathedrals and churches and felt that they distracted and tempted the clergy away from their religious studies and prayer. She wasn't going to go as far as banning clerical marriage, but she didn't think it was appropriate for clergymen and their wives to be together in cathedral grounds. So she wasn't encouraging clerical marriage by making things difficult for couples and families. A concerned William Cecil, Lord Burley, sent the mandate to Matthew Parker, Archbishop of Canterbury, commenting that Her Majesty continueth very evil affected to the state of matrimony in the clergy, and if I were not therein very stiff, Her Majesty would utterly and openly condemn and forbid it. The news must have worried the Archbishop, who'd been married since 1547. And he replied, saying that he was in a horror to hear such words to come from her mild nature and Christianly learned conscience as she spake concerning God's holy ordinance and institution of matrimony. Richard Cox, Bishop of Ely, also wrote to Parker concerning the edict, saying, If their wives be driven out, I suppose ye shall seldom find in most of the churches either dean or prebendary resident there. Now if their families be hurled out suddenly, it seemeth a poor reward for their preaching and godly travail hitherto. There is but one prebendary continually dwelling with his family in Ely Church. Turn him out, doves and owls may dwell there for any continual housekeeping." Archbishop Parker was outspoken in his defence of clerical marriage. He'd started cohabiting with his future wife Margaret in Henry VIII's reign and then had married her in June 1547, early in Edward VI's reign. When Mary I came to the throne, he'd refused to set his wife aside and so had been deprived of his benefice. He'd also written several treatises on the topic, including a defence of priests' marriages arguing that clerical marriage had been legal in England before the 11th century Norman invasion. In it, he wrote, No Christian man can deny but that a godly wife is a helper to honest and godly life in this world, to all such as have not the gift of single living given them of the Lord. Wherefore, it cannot be said that holy wedlock, if it be begun in the Lord, should be by itself an impediment to the office of a priest. Parker referred to his wife as his yoke mate and saw her as his helper and supporter. And Margaret was active in her role, interceding on behalf of petitioners and distributing her husband's work. But what about the Queen? Well, while Elizabeth I had rejected the Catholic doctrine of transubstantiation, ordering Bishop Oglethorpe not to elevate the host at Christmas 1558, and then storming out when he did so, she appeared unhappy with the idea of the clergy marrying. Was it down to her own faith, or was she trying to tread a middle ground and keep both her Protestant and Catholic subjects happy, but perhaps pleasing no one? It's hard to know. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 9th of August 1588, Queen Elizabeth I gave her famous Tilbury speech to the forces gathered at Tilbury Fort. 
It's a speech that has been immortalised on screen by the likes of Glenda Jackson and Kate Blanchett, and is famous for the line, I know I have the body but of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king, and of a king of England too. But what did Elizabeth really say that day? You can find out in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. You'll find that in the description. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.